Hey everybody, I'm Carl Lanning, Brazos River Charter School with This Week in History, specifically the week of November the 15th through 21st. Well, to start off with, on November 20th of 1820, the real life event that uh, inspired Herman Melville to write Moby Dick occurred. The whale ship Essex was about 3,000 miles off the coast of South America. Uh, the whale ship Essex itself looked something like this. That's not the ship, but uh, this would have been the style. Uh, while they were uh, out hunting whales, an unusually large, estimated at 85 feet long, bull sperm whale was lying on the surface. The whale, uh, in the distance, the whale started swimming towards the ship at a high rate of speed, ended up slamming into the Essex somewhere near the bow. Uh, the whale appeared to be stunned for a moment and then regained its composure, swam back out, and this time came straight at the ship, straight head on into the bow, and then swam away. The ship was damaged beyond repair, and the 20 or so men got into three small whale boats, and with whatever few provisions they were able to grab before the Essex went down. Uh, that's a pretty good representation of a whale boat. Now, near death after a month at sea, the boats landed on a small, uninhabited coral atoll. After exhausting the island's resources, 17 of the men decided to get back into the three whale boats. Uh, three men decided to stay on the island. They were actually rescued five months later. The three small whale boats got separated in a storm. One was found washed up on a deserted island some years later with uh, skeletons on board. The other two boats spent 89 and 93 days, respectively, drifting uh, before being found and rescued. Crewmen on both the boats had resorted to cannibalism in order to stay alive. Uh, at one, on a couple of occasions, apparently, lots were drawn among the survivors to see who would be sacrificed to feed the others. Uh, eight of the original 20 men survived, and believe it or not, all of the survivors were back at sea before the end of 1821. That was the year they were rescued. I don't think I'd ever go near a beach again. So, the events that inspired Moby Dick. Well, on November 19th of 1600, King Charles I was born. Now, 48 years later, King Charles I would be executed by beheading after unsuccessfully leading royalist forces against those of Parliament during what is known as the English Civil War. Now, I mentioned to you that uh, this fellow Humpty Dumpty was inspired by a real person. That was Charles I. A little children's rhyme that is about this man. So, let's, uh, Charles lives on this rhyme, so let's say it together. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Well, the meaning of that comes down to this. At the time, in the mid-17th century, to call somebody a Humpty Dumpty meant that they were a dullard. They were not very bright. Well, Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. He was a king. He was in the middle of a civil war. This was a, uh, the wall of a castle. He had a great fall. He was on the losing side of the Civil War, so he was no longer king. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again because he had a date with the headsman's axe. So, what a cheery little children's rhyme. Uh, now, this period of history appears to have given us a couple other pieces of the English language in the way of idioms. You may have heard the term warts and all. Well, this allegedly comes from Oliver Cromwell. This was the man who served as the virtual dictator of England after the execution of Charles for about 10 years or so. Now, in the style of the time, portrait painters would generally paint people much better than they actually looked. Very flattering portraits of the powerful was a good way of keeping your uh, head connected to the rest of your body. Now, there is a death mask of Cromwell, however, it was made of plaster, and it shows a prominent wart just below his lower lip. The legend is uh, that when he sat for a portrait painter, that Cromwell told the man, 
to paint him warts and all, or he wasn't going to pay for the portrait. And so he did. This is the uh, painting itself, and as you can tell, the artist did as he instructed, I suppose, because he wanted to be paid. <laughs> now, the other idiom is, is one that I have heard used by my grandparents, by people in my immediate family. It also appears in the movie True Grit. But I can honestly say I do not think I have ever heard anyone outside of my family or in that movie actually use this idiom. For example, when a, a pickle jar would be very, very difficult to, uh, to open, uh, my grandmother would say that it was on tighter than Dick's hat band. Now, this appears to be a reference to Richard Cromwell, who was Oliver's son, and succeeded him as Lord Protector for a short period of time, about nine months or so, before he was pushed aside by some very powerful uh, forces in England. Uh, originally, it appears to mean uh, someone uh, who was in a situation for which they simply were not a good fit. Uh, Richard would not be a good fit for the crown, hence the hat band was too tight. Now, I would be very curious if anybody else has ever heard this particular idiom or used it, tighter than Dick's hat band. And also, perhaps where it was and maybe the age of the, of the person who used it. Any information would be great. So in the comments section below this, if you have that information, tighter than Dick's hat band, if you could tell me whether or not you've heard that before, who, where it comes from, and maybe in what context it used, I would really love to hear it. Well, that's all for this week. Just to let you know what's coming up, though, next week, we will take a look at one of the great unsolved mysteries, crimes of all time. Thank you for your time. I'm Carl Lanning, Brazos River Charter School, and we look forward to seeing you right here next week.